morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, depending on where you're connecting from. Thank you for being with us today. I would like to warmly welcome you on behalf of RETP Group and Fortinet RE project team to this webinar. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Shadi Sadegian, Head of Multimodal Spaces and Services of Metroline 14 of Paris region. I'm also coordinator of the project and very honored to be moderator for today. It has been a long journey started in 2017. Several experts from different departments of RETP group uh, have contributed to this project, uh, co-financed by the European Commission. That was also an excellent opportunity for us to work with the experts from outside the group, for the, from the hospitality industry, from the airports, in order to build a cross-cutting um, approach on this topic and on this uh, project. So let us share with you a short video uh, summarizing the context and principal stakes of this project. Here we go. Great, so without any further ado, let me share with you our agenda for today. So for this webinar, we will have two main parts. On the first part, we will uh, focus on the main conclusions and learning of the different steps of the project. And then uh, we, we have a short Q&R session following with a panel discussion at the end. So uh, saying that, let's move to our first panel. We have the chance today to have Emmanuel Soloni, director of Metroline 14, my director actually, with us today. We have Sarah Black from our department of marketing uh, today with us. She will share with us um, uh, the conclusions of a client study conducted during the project. And finally, we have Yoke Minagai, head of uh, design of RIT. TP. He will share with us the set of, a set of propositions, service proposition, built in a holistic approach during in this project as a final steps. So uh, just just before start, I would like to share two important points with you. First of all, this uh, webinar would be fully in English, but you can find a recorded version, subtitled in French in a few days on the website of the project. There you can find also the white paper of the project with uh, the executive summary of different milestones and steps of the project, the, the, the different informations and also the, the videos. So I invite you to, uh, to, to, to go and uh, visit this uh, website. We have also, second point, the important one, we have also a chat box so you can write all your questions to us. So you can share your feedbacks so please don't hesitate. You can write them either in English or French. So that's all for me at this stage. Let's move to our presentations. Emmanuel, the floor is yours, please. Thank you, Shadi. So I'm very uh, happy and very honored to start the uh, presentation of this webinar as a new director of the Line 14 because I've just started my job only one month ago. Uh, so I will discover with you all the conclusions of these studies. Uh, so first of all, let's start with the identity card of the line 14. So this line was created in 1998, and this is the most recent metro line in Paris network. Um, this line was created uh, by thinking and forcing uh, the future. 
Uh, indeed, line fronting is an automated metro line with high, ca with high capacity. It was the first in the world in 1998. And uh, over transportation capacity, this metro line was designed with the ambition of changing transportation experience for our customers. Rapidity of traveling, modernity of our station, new services in station, and also disabled access standards. After a few months, uh, from 1998, uh, the line 14 became the most popular line in uh, Paris uh, region, uh, with a high level of services um, recognized uh, daily by our customers. And the line was extended two times in 2003 and 2007. After 15 years of success, uh, the Grand Paris Express program is leading, is leading Line 14 to a major transformation, as this line will become the backbone of the new metro network for Paris region. In 10 years, from 2015 to 2024, uh, toward the Olympic Games in 2024, uh, the Line 14 will be extended three times. Uh, the first one has been made in 2020, so Two, uh, two extensions are coming to the north and to the south, and the line will be doubling in terms of number of stations and in terms of length. Moreover, all train and all operating system uh, will be changed to increase comfort and capacity for our customers. Uh, these two extensions to the north and to the south are a huge investment, uh, around 2.8 uh, billion euros, uh, and also uh, 0 0.5 billion euros for the rolling stock. This extension uh, will serve new districts uh, under development, development in the north of Paris, uh, will also reduce journey time uh, for the people living in the south, and also um, we will create a strategic connection between railway station in the city centre of Paris to Orly Airport. Let's imagine that you will be able to move from Paris to Orly in only 20 minutes with one train every two minutes. So with this extension in 2024, the line will reach 1 million passengers a day, which is a very important traffic for a metro line. So this is a strong challenge for um, every RATP team. Um, so everybody, of course, is working uh, from a technical point of view to create the station, the tunnel. But we are also working um, in an operation and maintenance uh, point of view and about our organization. Because the challenge is also about the diversity of the, cuts of the customers that we will serve. Them. Uh, some, of one, some of them will come from Orly uh, for business, for tourists, but we will also have uh, passengers, daily passengers that are, are using the line to go to work uh, in Paris. So I would like uh, to say that as the pioneers of the line 14 in the 90s, we had to think and foresee what could be the new services in 2024, and this is the subject of this study, uh, 14 at Orly. Great, thank you, Emmanuel, for this clear presentation. Thank you for having shared with us the opportunity, but also the bottlenecks ahead for the next few years. Saying that, uh, we move to Sarah. Uh, Sarah, can you tell us a little bit more uh, about the expectations, the needs, but also the fears of our future passengers? Yes, please. Uh, thank you, Shadi, and hello to all. Um, I'm very glad to uh, share the work that has been uh, done over a uh, quite significant uh, period of time and involving several people that I take the opportunity to thank here. So um, Emmanuel has uh, shared the big challenges that the line is going to overcome or have to overcome in the upcoming years. So the first step was in indeed customer understanding in a deliberate customer-centric approach. So I'll be going through this part uh, fairly quickly to be, sh to be sure that we have enough time to grasp mm. the service innovations. But it has been a thorough and important process. We've gathered the existing data that we've complemented uh, specifically on Line 14 with 
six complementary studies, starting with one important study that was carried out between December 2019 and February 2020, so before the COVID crisis, to understand what are the future clients. So what are the impacts of extensions up north and south in terms of change of profiles, but also the change in the line uses. Uh, understand what are the requirements and expectations of our clients, the different priorities. And it enabled to highlight the different subjects that we should deep dive in. For instance, um, the focus on visitors welcoming services throughout uh, the customer journey. Uh, the role, uh, the human dimension, the role, the visibility, the script that uh, human dimension should have on this uh, very crowded line and uh, that is going to have daily commuters, both with international visitors. The fourth subject we investigated is connectivity. We know it's an important matter for foreigners, for international visitors. So what are the market standards also in the hospitality industry? The fifth, which is not the least, is uh, about load information, both in trains and in the spaces. And the last one is how Orly Airport should be served, uh, comparing attractivity with Line 14. So all these studies have been detailed, very much so. Uh, you'll be able to find the top lines in the white papers that we've published uh, this week and that you'll be able to find on our website that I know I think you have uh, uh, underneath. Yes. So in any case, if we mix all these studies up, we can come up with eight big conclusions that are useful insights to introduce the work that you will be presenting in a couple of minutes. So on a global standpoint, what we can say is that there is indeed uh, an increased level of demand and complexity that will have to be addressed on the line. The first insight is, and Emmanuel started saying so, the new client's profile that will have to be addressed, that it will be arriving on the line with increased demand and with specific needs. We know, for example, that we'll have increased number of uh, um, not frequent travelers, one-time travelers, occasional travelers, uh, the international visitors, of course, packed with luggage and not speaking the language, but also local residents will have increased demand. We know, for instance, that 23% of local residents of Paris, Ile-de-France uh, uh, region uh, will be uh, more frequent or new users of the line and 52% uh, of the new users will be reducing the use of a personal car, so most probably be expecting more comfort and more fluidity. And all these people are going to coexist on the line, uh, this crowded line and automated line. The second insight is that even though the, the extensions uh, north and south are positively perceived, the local residents do already rouse some reservations. They, in a way, fear of losing what makes Line 14 the best in class. 32% of local residents fear of uh, uh, losing the security and 29% lose a, a loss of um, comfort because of the increase of crowd, promiscuity and uh, a lesser uh, regularity. So in a way, um, losing an overall safe atmosphere. The third uh, insight is that we'll have to be dealing with three operating contexts from the very outset, meaning first situation, high traffic periods, second uh, off-peak, sort of off-peak periods with no significant traffic increase, and of course, disturbed situations with a specific focus on flow management that will be needed. And given the, these three first insights, and in line with what makes Line 14's DNA, clients are expecting, indeed, a high quality level of service, be it digital, physical, or human, and uh, especially in terms of client welcoming and presence, with a particular care of vulnerable clients, reduced mobility clients and visitors, of course. As a fifth insight, and let's say beyond the different facets that makes the excellence of uh, the service mix, uh, we'll have a big challenge in terms of human 
dimension, and especially the human-centered services carried by staff. Um, they're going to have to uh, have increased skills and uh, newly positioned in space. I've already mentioned the increased skills in terms of welcoming and presence, uh, particular care with, for vulnerable clients, but also that much more visible and identificate uh, that um, enables to identify these this staff. The second set of skills that are going to be important are the dealing with security and tense situations. Uh, so this is going to be a tough one. And uh, we know also that um, there is a strategic positioning that is going to be required that are the station platforms, both for information and flow management. And of course, let's not forget the question of languages with a massive and fluent use of foreign languages that will be uh, necessary in the upcoming future. The sixth conclusion, and it's important, is of course the studies confirm, uh, and this is obvious, it's not new to us, that clients are expecting a top-notch, top-of-the-range passenger information that is of course seamless, real-time and reassuring, well positioned in space, meaning before arriving to the station, sort of a touch screens to even the trains with geolocated information, not forgetting in the stations and in the platforms, um, contextualized information, and of course, adapted to all our targets, especially the air travelers with eventually information on the next air flights and so on, that will have also to be managed maybe by our staff. The next conclusion that is interesting also is that the clients are expecting seamless connection with Metroline 14's environment. So beyond, of course, the connection with transport and intermo intermodality, conventional or new modes, clients are expecting connections with the urban dimension, the territories, the activity, the economical background of Line 14. And last, the eighth and final conclusion that we can highlight here is how Orly Airport is going to be served. We know that with the extension down south, uh, Line 14 is going to concentrate up to 35% of share choice mm -hmm. of the clients to ensure their ride back and forth to Line 14, to Orly Airport. So we know that this is going to increase even more <coughs> the saturation that we already can foresee on the Line 14. So it's going to be compulsory to think of a multimodal offer to go to Orly with a smart mix between buses, Orly bus, uh, a bus ensuring the same trajectory as Line 14, for example, with some partnerships with taxi services or uh, chauffeur-driven car services. So these are the eight conclusions um, that we believe are interesting insights to be able to introduce the work that uh, you, you're going to go through now in a minute. Great, many brilliant thanks, Sarah, uh, for having summarized such heavy and high quality client study, uh, which is providing an excellent input to the work that you will present to us. Please, you. Thank you, Shadi. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, you can imagine that this material, this intellectual material, was very important for us. To, to, to allow us to, to, to do a very good job in service design. Uh, and for that, I will present first the challenges we had to face. If I say again, the unprecedented, unprecedented situation in which we have to be, we have to prepare, is that we'll have to serve international passengers arriving with luggage mixed to daily commuters in flows going back home or going to work in, during, in the morning on a line which is uh, uh, operated with a headway of 80 seconds at peak hours. So for that we have absolutely to, uh, to have an, a customer-centric approach in the design of the solutions or the pr of the principles which will become the solutions. 
with in mind the target, the very strategic target of Paris Olympic 2024. And because we know there are, it's an, a very uh, complete uh, land, uh, line, uh, metro line is not a very simple place, it's very complicated, we have to create an adoption by many stakeholders. So the study had to deliver concrete, concrete results uh, to, to make easier the adopt adoption of the, of, the, of the principles. So for that, we've made some strategic choices. Um, <coughs> uh, Emmanuel has told that the, the density, the intensity of the investment was very high already. You can see the figures here. I will not repeat them. So we have decided to focus on the services. That means uh, digital, physical and human sides of the service in a holistic enhancement of the infrastructure. And for that, we have chosen to work with a specialized service design agency called User Studio. Um, the method which has been proposed for our um, study is a bit original, in fact. Because, of course, at the beginning, we have read the th hundreds of pages coming from Sarah and his, her team, but also we have made some shadowing observations of the international passengers who have looked at their behaviors, and we have interviewed travelers and experts to try to understand what will happen uh, in, the, in the coming years. And because of the situation of the present health crisis, which can blur an incremental approach, uh, which could make that not as reliable as uh, expected, we have uh, decided to jump to 2050 to create for ourselves a vision uh, through some hypothesis of uh, the scenarios and come back to 2024, considering this uh, uh, deadline as a first step of a big evolution. And to ensure all the proposals we had to, uh, to give at the end of the study, uh, uh, we were surrounded by some experts uh, coming from outside and inside the company. Uh, to, they have challenged the making of the study. They have challenged the results and they have pushed us to select what is important, what is not important. They were coming from foreign railways, from the environment world, from urban placemaking. There was an artist. They are coming, of course, from the air, air economy, airports, and about accessibility, customer relation, innovation, urban hubs, and safety. And this was really important to enrich the, the, the co collective thinking in which we, we had to work. So, this is the first page of the results. As you know, a service design method is based on something which is very, very important. It's a customer journey map. So, it structures where the service has to be delivered. And it structures the way uh, a customer is perceiving the service he's consuming through uh, points which are called the touch points. So it's perhaps strange that you see 17 touch points to describe a metro service. But in fact, a platform is not only one touch point. It has to be considered as one touch point when you enter in the metro, another touch point when you go out, another touch point if you wait there to, to have a, a meeting with other uh, travelers. So. Um, these 17 touch points describe correctly what uh, travel in, on an urban, uh, uh, urban uh, travel should be. But in fact, you will see that um, we have added some touch points before the, the, the travel to Paris. So after having done this uh, 2050 vision, we have chosen some uh, specific service principles to design the services. First, of course, we have to streamline and to rationalize all the journeys. 
not only for uh, international travelers with the luggage, but also for local people, because uh, they, there will be an interference between uh, s the, the different uh, customers. And if uh, there is a, a, a bad flow uh, for uh, daily commuters, it will have an influence on people who are uh, loaded with baggage, by luggage. Uh, and the second principle seems perhaps a bit naive, but in fact, it's very important. Um, a metro is a place where people don't pay attention to the others because it's the daily use. But in fact, if we introduce some goodwill towards one another, we can hope that in some situations which can be difficult, for example, some disturbed situation, the visitors can be first helped by the local people who, who will be instinctively at their service because our staff will come, but afterwards. The third principle is that, you know, we are not living in a, always in a positive world now. So all these challenges, all the threats we have to face can, can be, can be uh, um, um, corrected by some anticipation from RATP. And we want to present Line 14 as a safe and protecting environment. Uh, the fourth uh, principle is that when you arrive in Paris, uh, people visit, also, of course, the monuments, but also they want to see the people, the citizens, how we live here in this uh, region, big region. And uh, the Greater Paris has many inhabitants uh, with activities which could be shown on, the, on, on our premises. So this is a, a principle which, which is not yet really exploited in our global design. And to finish, it's a bit easy to say that, but a, a metro uh, line is a good solution in a low carbon approach. But all the services we have to add should be also imagined in, with this uh, low tech and low carbon uh, approach. So these five principles have been applied and we have uh, proposed almost 50 services uh, on these 17 touch points, classified in three families. Please uh, don't be afraid, I will not describe the 50. I don't have any time. But for me, it's a bit uh, frustrating because um, the, uh, the study is very rich and of course everything is presented in the white paper. But I will insist on the three titles. Provide a warm welcome, produce a comprehensive information and support streamlined journeys. It seems very banal, in fact. Yes, you have done uh, several years studies to say that. OK, but in fact, the details are very important. How to provide a warm welcome, how to do, how to touch everyone's need. So this, this is a, uh, the main work we have done. And I will present that in a, as a, I will present a selection of uh, services. So first, providing a warm welcome. One of the studies made by uh, the commercial department SAR has presented um, was about the welcoming with another uh, service design agency, Yellow Window. And we have discovered that welcoming is not only with a welcoming desk, it's an attitude from the beginning to the end. And for example, it means that we can begin before the journey. So we want to propose a digital companion, a, a travel kit to go to Paris, uh, an arrival kit uh, on everybody's smartphone, uh, for example, with uh, passes, low carbon or no hurry travel passes, which can be added to, to pay in advance. And then uh, many tips about Paris and the public transport network. And also something which is very interesting to do is to uh, offer some uh, in offline some podcasts of expats in their own language speaking about Paris. So this is a good preparation a uh, public transport system can offer to, the, to a visitor. 
And the same tool, after arriving, arrival in Oli, can be used as an onboarding system. Uh, it means an onboarding on the public transport network. Uh, when the smartphone will be connected, uh, it will give an access to the network because uh, with the NFC principle, the smartphone can uh, become a ticket. But of course, there will be also another service like um, the first itinerary to go to the first destination because the visitor will have been invited to enter its own language, his first address, so that it will be guided through the assistant which he is discovering. And of course, if he doesn't want to or she doesn't want to use the smartphone as a ticket, it can be a voucher to get something more classical. After that, we know also that everybody is not digital, that there are people who are a bit uh, uncomfortable with all these tools. So they will not be lost because we want our staff to be there, really visible, really in a welcoming attitude with their own uh, digital companion, uh, which will give them some helps about the dialogues they can have in many languages. And as you can see here, um, there, uh, we can imagine also um, a, screen, a screenshot with some pictograms with which the dialogue can be uh, uh, can begin between a visitor and our staff. And last but not the least, one of the very interesting services we have imagined is this video assistance by remote helpers. You can see here Antonio da Silva, a Portuguese speaking uh, colleague from RATP. Uh, for example, from the commercial department, he has registered himself during three hours on Saturday afternoon and he will be available to help the local staff through a tablet and with loudspeakers to help uh, Portuguese-speaking visitors who arrive in there. What service? Really direct and uh, very human, but assisted by a digital uh, a tool. So you can imagine that uh, through this, uh, uh, this uh, welcoming, uh, warm welcome approach, uh, we have invented also proposed many other services. I can't list them. Um, I will enter in the second category, second family, which is information. So first of all, I have to say that the classical um, displays of an information system, that to say signage, maps, um, uh, screens, must be everywhere. You, you can see that on the Paris network, and it will not be less than that. It's really a very important uh, uh, system. Uh, a metro without signage doesn't work. But in fact, um, in this situation, we have imagined some additional services which are really interesting. For example, about the language, how to create translated messages uh, for a um, uh, um, disrupted situation. When you arrive, when you don't understand, attention sur la ligne 14, un problème. So, if you don't understand, you are worrying, what is he saying? But we imagine that if the visitor has entered his language, uh, he can uh, get a notification saying that the announcement is repeated on the smartphone in its, his own language. For example, here it's in Greek because we imagine somebody coming from Athens. So you imagine the, the, the quality of this service? But of course, there is another challenge is to translate the, these type of messages on the screens or on the public announces through automatic translators for which we are already uh, working. Um, and this, these are really uh, important tools we have to propose for the, for the Olympics, uh, and I hope before. Um, another domain which is very interesting is how to help people 
the local ones, the Parisians and the visitors to deal with the crowd because it will be a saturated line. So in, at some times, not everywhere, every, at every moment, of course. We have already here, um, on the digital companion, or on the RATP app, an indication about uh, the crowding of the lines, but it's uh, crowdsourced. And we can imagine after that the platform car load indicators, which are shown here, to help people to behave, to wait, uh, to wait for the next train. Imagine one train every 80 seconds is nothing. So even if you wait two or three trains, if you arrive in, uh, uh, take a train in Oli, it's, it's re really reliable. But we want to add something which is new, which is this uh, service uh, here uh, in strategic points with a, an alternative to Line 14. There are uh, four or five stations where there are parallel lines to the Line 14, which could allow to, to make the flow better and to give the choice to the traveler. Uh, oh yes, today I will not take the line seven, uh, 14, I will take the 7, for example, in Maison Blanche. And uh, this is a very precisely uh, designed uh, st service structure, uh, which uh, came through the design service design method. For example, here, uh, there are already an example here uh, from Japan with the Tokyo Central uh, 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 circle line where uh, JR East offers the temperature and the load of all the cars of all the trains. So you can imagine that this information uh, field is huge. We can go further, for example, by giving uh, something for the passengers going back to Oli, the, the, how we could uh, uh, give some information about uh, the, the, the flight the flights arriving and departing from Oli, but also something else, uh, adding some um, slowdown distractions on the stations if people can see um, that the trains are really crowded. If they have an activity to wait, why not? If, of, of course, it's correctly dim dimensioned. So the, the, the third domain, the third family, is about going with the people during the, uh, along their journeys. So, uh, customer journey map, it's the main tool we have in service design. So it's a map and we can match all the, the touch points where there are some pain points. And one of the pain points we know for a metro line is the luggage. So when you arrive in Paris, we'll not propose a special service like in some other countries, but uh, we think that we have to manage the mix of uh, laden passengers and of uh, uh, hurried uh, passengers with a, in a hurry who are going uh, to their work. And for that, uh, we propose to add a series of points strategically located to help them for example, here you can see on some different places, even in the trains, some points lit by a uh, purple light. Purple because it's the color of the line, but it could be something else. And people would jump from one point to another as uh, you are in the land landscape, in the, in the countryside, and you can, you can discover uh, uh, a mountain or something. But here, it's a very practical tool uh, helping really people to go on the flow, but beside the main flow, you can see here on Montreal the, the principle of uh, indicating um, uh, some uh, points through light. We know it's possible. Another point, uh, another point we want to propose is that uh, uh, when you, you go, you take the metro. Uh, many times, in many times, you are not alone. You can give a, a meeting to uh, colleagues or friends coming from the, on, another hotel. So, or you want to meet 
some uh, local people. Where? It's always difficult to say, let's meet there. Uh, it's not always easy. So we want to add some points, meeting points, which is really a service by itself. External ones, internal ones, in the stations, outside, in some greened places around the stations. And you can see here in uh, Danfer Rochereau in Paris, a place we have uh, treated in front of the uh, area station always, and it will follow a recommendation written by our colleagues of the Société du Grand Paris, SGP, and which, who have published uh, this document, Place du Grand Paris, which has been uh, pushed also by Ile-de-France Mobilité, uh, our uh, public transport authority. And to finish, the last example I want to say is that these entrances could take an, another importance in the city. Because uh, in, in a city, the metro is important, but sometimes the entrance is not as visible as possible. And it could, be, it could answer to other functions than entering or exiting a station. And here, some ideas which has been proposed is to upgrade some entrances to create value for the passengers, for the neighborhood, for the, the cityscape. And of course, if people can wait there, we can also imagine one of the other services which is not described, described in my presentation, is some additional uh, electric bus feeder lines uh, uh, to, uh, to, to serve passengers with luggage in some uh, 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 districts with uh, high density of hotels, but arriving to secondary stations of Line 14. So, uh, you, you know, with all, what, uh, all my descriptions, I, I hope you are as frustrated as me, because we have other services to present, but I have to finish. And my conclusion will be in two pages. Um, first of all, I want to say that uh, we will not stay here. We, uh, it's the, the delivery of the uh, uh, research exploration study and a follow-up will be built to go further because we want the ideas being adopted by many uh, takers and in the RATP group and in the Ile-de-France mobility ecosystem, so not only us, because the, the, the cities, the authority, and uh, other, uh, other companies, other uh, uh, subsidiaries could do some development. And for that, what will be very important is to install a cross-cutting governance, because if not, it can be really uh, something uh, with a big disorder in a few years. So we want to monitor the maturity increase of all these concepts. And to finish about uh, service design, I have explained at the beginning that I have, uh, uh, I have pushed to choose this discipline to, for this study. But in fact, it has proved again that it's a good discipline to explore and structure upstream phases of systemic issues of complex issues, and um, because it guarantees coherence and continuity for the customers, and it facilitates the, uh, the decision makers' strategies, because uh, it's easy to, to know what uh, they want to get at the end. So thanks to User Studio, our uh, service and agency, we have discovered again that mobility is really an ideal play playground for service design. So this is the, the last page of my presentation, and uh, I will propose you to, to have a, a, a repetition of what I've said through a video which has been prepared by User Studio. A major expansion is planned for the Paris region's fully automated subway Line 14 for 2024, just in time for the Olympic Games. Extending it north to the town of Saint-Denis and south to Orly International Airport. 
it will trim the airport to city centre trip to 25 minutes and double the line's passengers to a million a day, with the metro every 80 seconds during rush hour. The project aims to improve access to Paris, link the region's strategic areas and keep the capital relevant as a world economic hub. Unlike an express train, Line 14 will have local residents riding side by side with international travellers, lugging suitcases and often using the metro for the first time. This set the RATP, the main regional transport operator, thinking about how to accommodate this new, bigger mix while keeping traffic flowing smoothly. The result was the service design project, which came up with more than 45 proposals to shape the passenger experience, as part of a larger study called 14 at Ori, co-financed by the INEA. These explored ways to integrate customer relations, digital resources and architectural features into a transit journey, offering a warm welcome, clear information and a smooth trip. Here are a few examples. All are still in the study phase and need further sponsorship and development before they find their place in the transport network. A warm welcome. To help travellers feel at ease, they can buy different types of tickets online before their journey, including a low carbon pass, a card that would give access to all eco-friendly transport in the city. Visitors can also download a Paris welcome kit onto their smartphones with tips and information about the capital and its transport options. This will include video clips by expat residents or foreign travellers to give an insider view in their native language. RATP personnel will be equipped with translation and video conference tools to help non-French speaking riders. The RATP worker can contact a colleague who speaks the tourist language to act like a live translator to answer questions. Clear information. To help guide traffic flow in real time, signs called crowd monitors will be on display in key stations throughout the network to propose alternative routes if line 14 is too crowded. If there is a problem, a service called Announcement Repeater will offer riders a written version on their smartphone of any loudspeaker announcement in the language of their choice. On the ride to the airport, screens will display how much time is left before arrival at all these different terminals. Other screens will have a QR code so travellers can access direct information on flight arrivals and departures. A smooth trip. For impaired or elderly travellers, or those loaded down with suitcases, baby strollers or other items, a series of rest stops will be set up. They can be easily spotted so slower travellers can follow their own pace without disrupting the crowds. A series of meeting points, both inside and outside the network, will offer riders a place to take a break, arrange a meeting or, why not, have a chance encounter with a friendly stranger. These are only a few of the numerous proposals that grew out of the 14 at Ori service design project. They reflect the RATP's commitment to excellence in developing the future line 14 of the Paris Metro. Excellent. Thank you very much, you, for this appealing uh, overview of all different uh, services that we can have on our metro lines. That was great and thank you very much. Uh, Emmanuel, me and all our colleagues from RATP uh, Metro Line 14, sorry, we are uh, looking forward to have all these uh, services available soon for our passengers. So thank you, thank you, you too, it was great. So if you're okay, we can open the questions uh, from the audience. Uh, we have many, many questions, so I will uh, choose a few ones. We will do our best in order to cover uh, several questions. So if you can keep uh, and make your questions concise, that would be wonderful, okay? So let's uh, go through the questions. Uh, 
Uh, well, uh, there is a question, uh, uh, very interesting question, but a difficult one. Uh, you propose many ideas, 50 already. How do you imagine implementing them? It's okay, that's, uh, there are three answers for that. Okay. I have prepared a bit myself <laughs> about this question, but I was sure this uh, question <laughs> would arrive. First of all, we have to organize this governance of the follow-up. Yeah. Because this was an exploration phase, of and we course. have to enter an experimentation, uh, experimentation and prototyping phase. This is not a, a, a play. We have to create the structure of the work. And we will have a selection uh, of that. Through this governance, the second answer is that we will have some takers. Uh, the internal and external takers of the ideas will have to present how they can reach uh, the results. And in function of that, we'll choose the ones uh, to, 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 to support or not. But the, sec the third one is the customer studies, which will arrive later. Because, you know, if we don't do only what is feasible, perhaps it will not be interesting. So we have to match to, th to the expe expectation coming from the passengers. So, uh, yeah, the, the work now will be very important. Of course, I do agree with you. Thank you, you. Second, the next question, and a very interesting one. So, um, we have a question on how do you balance the expectations of international tra travelers and local commuters? Their expectations or needs could be in conflict? Maybe, Sarah, this is for you. Um, well, yes, uh, indeed, it has been a, a question mark all over 2020 because also of the COVID crisis, how to address this uh, balance. And uh, in a way, it wasn't really a question given the challenges and the huge challenges that Metroline 14 is going to be facing, mm -hmm. it was important for us to take from the very beginning the highest standard in terms of client expectations, of and those are the tourists. In terms of welcoming, in terms of complementarity, of digital, or all the tools we have available in hands. So in a way, uh, for us, uh, addressing tourists is addressing the overall big challenge of this crowded line. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question for you, Emmanuel. I think this is for you. At our level, line, uh, at our level, line information is provided at rolling stock uh, screens. On rolling stock uh, screens. Very interesting and useful uh, equipment, actually. Uh, will, it, uh, will it be deployed at line 14 extensions? Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for this question. So. Uh, since the beginning of last year, in 2020, mm -hmm. uh, we are renewing the fleet of rolling stock of Line 14. We've got a new eight-car train, yeah. um, and it will be um, uh, deployed on the Line 14 up to uh, the extension to Orly. So we will mm -hmm. uh, buy 72 of this train, and this is a new generation of train. And in this train, we've got uh, two screens per car. Uh, so we will use these screens um, to make uh, passenger information, uh, dynamic passenger information. For instance, when you've got an incident of the line, we can use this screen uh, to provide uh, information in real time for our passengers. So um, we have just started it for, for the, from the end of last year. So we will continue and we will improve these systems. Uh, maybe th with some of the ideas that were in the presentation of you, we will see. But this system uh, already exists and will be improved towards uh, 2024. Great, thank May you. May I add yeah, an answer to your question? It means that it's also the answer to the first question. We have already some uh, developments which have begun on some parts of the mm -hmm. network, the Ile-de-France network, also perhaps we don't know all on some other networks of the RIT group. So the challenge of this innovation program mm -hmm. is to gather that in a set which will be clear for everybody. So the Olival experiment is very important to feed the, what we have to know to create the content of the information, the real-time information on the line 14 tomorrow. Indeed, indeed, of course. 
Yes, we have a question on a key topic of the project. This is for you, Yo. Um, it's a question on the luggage management. So, have you studied the specific services relevant to luggage management in the project? Yes, of course, we have studied the point. Uh, from the beginning, I was bringing the Hong Kong and the Vienna example mm -hmm. with the uh, central city uh, checking service, which is fantastic in Hong Kong. But I have, we have remembered uh, that this was not solving all the issues. Of course. And it's a personal example also, but when I arrived several times in Hong Kong with my luggage in Admiralty Station, when I've tried to enter in the island line, it was impossible. So this type of service serves the departing passengers, but not the arriving passengers. So the welcoming can be very tough. So because of that, we have chosen from the beginning to mix all the flows and to try with the assistance of the staff to create a good, good conditions to make these, uh, this uh, co-living co of several uh, types of passengers. Because uh, we know that in an uh, international metropolis, this situation will, will be really uh, um, uh, the normal situation. In the, and uh, one of my friends was telling me that, oh, when I arrived in Paris, I have seen so many people with luggage. When I was, I'm used to see that, but in, indeed, in the metro, you have everywhere people with luggage, and we have to help them um, even in peak hours normally. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, and maybe the last question for you, Sarah. Um, it's on the COVID crisis. We have a question on how have you attended the question of decreasing number of tourists due to the COVID crisis? Well, yes, this is a very interesting, of course, oh. question. And I've started answering uh, uh, in the, my earlier question. Um, indeed, uh, what we know um, from numbers before the COVID crisis is that we would go through uh, 30 million uh, air arrivals mm -hmm. in, in uh, 2019 in Orly Airport. And what was uh, planned was up to 40 million in 2025. So we had that in mind and sort of panicked about uh, load uh, and traffic. Uh, but in a way, um, this is, of course, going to be increasing the challenge. But we already have it from the very start, even without tourists. And we already notice with the extension up north that it's already challenging. Profile of clients have already changed. And it's not the same comfort. So Let's say that this is the first part of the answer. And in any case, uh, Paris is going to be hosting the, Olympi <laughs> the Olympic Games in 2024. So this is something that we had in mind as being also compulsory for us to mm -hmm. sort of uh, know better clients on, on this standpoint. And our belief is also that the profile of the clients, uh, tourists will change probably the yeah. long distance uh, uh, tourists will probably take a little longer to come back, but city breakers, which are m the most frequent uh, travelers uh, in Paris, will come, will come soon, are already coming. Uh, we, have, um, we have traffic, uh, we have train uh, stations that are also going to be uh, bringing uh, French tourists. So tourists overall is a key uh, aspect that we have to know and address on Metro Line 14. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to all of you. That was a pleasure to have you on stage uh, you. with us. Thank you, so uh, we are arriving at, a, um, at, a, uh, at the end of our first uh, part of this webinar. Um, we will take a, a very short break, just five minutes in order to prepare uh, the final panel discussions. Stay with us, please. Thank you.
yes, we are back again. Thank you for having stayed with us. Uh, so we start our final part of the webinar with a panel discussion and with a distinguished guest from outside the RETP uh, group. So today we have the chance to have Yasunari Nakajima with us. Good afternoon, Yasunari. He's yeah. senior fellow from uh, GR East. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have also Damien Perro with us, uh, uh, Global Senior Vice President Design uh, uh, from Accorcraft. Uh, good afternoon, Damien. Thank good you afternoon. for having accepted our invitation. And we have Frédéric Sorin, Head of Cons uh, Customer Experience uh, uh, from Group ADP Airports of Paris, or Paris Airports, yes. And at this distance, we have Matthew Marino with us, director and partners of User Studio, which is our partner um, on this project. Hi, Matthew. Great to have you with Hi. us today. Yeah, great. So um, I will start our panel discussion with an important questions. Um, on the services on the presentation of you, the previous presentation. You, 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 was, you were also the member of the expert committee, so uh, you know the set of uh, almost 50 services propositions uh, have been built uh, in a holistic approach. Uh, I'm eager to have your feedback on these propositions. So if you can share with me and with our audience your feedback, and uh, if uh, there is, a t please tell us which ones are more interesting or more essentials for you. So let's start with Damien, please. So first of all, thank you very much. It was um, an honor for me and I had very good time uh, as an expert for this, uh, for this fantastic uh, let's say, a, a journey, uh, if, I can, if I can call it uh, this, uh, like it. Uh, what I like to say is definitely uh, the, big, uh, the big change that uh, you bring to the table. I don't want to, 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 to mention uh, one or two uh, typical services, because I think every one are very important. Uh, it's really the combination of everything. You know, when we talk about design, Design and one of the definition of design, it's really um, uh, unable or, or, or facilitate uh, the life of uh, of the people uh, in order to to really uh, make them forget all the constraints and experience something and yes. and to get to get yes. finally emotion. So what you've done here is you combine physical, digital. And, um, and human, uh, let's say, attitude and services in order to provide that services. And I can give you just a few examples that it's a good uh, combination. First of all, uh, it's, it's about the, the, the welcoming uh, of uh, Parisian. The Parisian who live in Paris, I, I call them the, the locals, but also the one who will be Parisian only for a couple of hours or a couple of days, and that's the one travel the travelers are coming from different, yes. different regions or different, different, uh, different country. So the digital uh, solution uh, uh, implemented will help them to prepare their journey and to be really well welcome when they arrive in the city yes. and finally know exactly how they can use the, 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 the metro and all the, the, the services at, the, at their disposal. In, in, in order to, to better understand what they can do and, 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 and facilitate uh, their, their, their stay. The other one is the one who support uh, the people from R RATP because it's very important to take care about them as well in order to make them really comfortable and to really be completely open to the client in order to better uh, 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 enhance, let's say, their, their experience and facilitate uh, their stay. So if you want to... To, to advise someone on what to do, on, on, on whatever. The language is very key, so uh, the fact having those augmented RATP people uh, with a, a tool that can translate automatically, uh, it's, a, it's a very, very good tool. And then the other one, which is more physical, is all the design you implement in order to, to let's say, uh, uh, eliminate one of the biggest pain points for travelers, which is the luggage. And uh, uh, the luggage is, uh, 
it's uh, really uh, something, uh, a nightmare all the time for the travelers, but also for the one who, who do not have luggage but has been hurt, etc. So you have created lots of design solutions in order to facilitate, uh, to facilitate that. So it is, for example, you know, very different, but that really uh, combine everything in order to, uh, to, uh, to make life uh, uh, better for, for everyone. Great, thank you. I know this is, an, this is a difficult question that I'm asking uh, to you. And uh, actually, this, this that you have mentioned, to empower our colleague to be comfortable uh, in their mission, this is essential for us in order to support our clients and their needs. It's, I do agree with you on this point. It's very important. So I move uh, to Frederic. Thank you again for being with us. Same question with you. If you can share your feedback on these propositions, please. Thank you, Shadi. Good afternoon. Uh, to provide the passenger with a successful experience in Group RDP uh, airports, we ensure that uh, we enable uh, customers to better anticipate and optimize the travel time in our terminal. We offer the best of the Parisian experience through the unique range of shops and services. We simplify and personalize customer service and the experience of each individual, particularly through um, digital uh, technology. And we innovate and constantly improve the quality of service to remain at the level of the best uh, European and uh, world class airports. In this sense, and I agree with you, of course, uh, all the work that has been done uh, within the scope of the, um, this project uh, is going in a good sense uh, and good direction. However, if I had to choose uh, two case uh, services, I would choose uh, translated messages and announcement repeaters in the, context, uh, in the context of our work to make the airport quieter and to simplify the life of half on our customer who doesn't speak French, this service will be useful, very useful in our terminal and in the, re the right way to go to our terminal. Um, I would also choose uh, re um, relay points uh, beside the flow. Uh, depending on their profile and their knowledge of the areas, uh, our passengers have very, have very different circulation patterns in and around the airport. Uh, it is important to allow them to stand aside with their group, with their luggage, uh, to help them familiarize themselves with uh, the space and with uh, in available information. Uh, this will make them feel more relaxed and satisfied. Thank you very much. That was an excellent opportunity for us to work with you for the airports in order to find a perfect balance between the services provided in the uh, terminals and what we can provide on our metro line. Thank yeah. you again. So I move to Matthew. Matthew, uh, your feedback, of course, uh, on these services, please. Yeah, hi, Shadi. Hi, everyone. Um, so one of the things that we were very happy about, very excited about with this project is that we could work on a passenger experience to make it, of course, more efficient, which is key when you have passengers with you know, heavy luggage, but also to make it a more desirable experience. And I think that's particularly important maybe for at least two reasons. One, because, of course, our ATP um, will need to differentiate itself or wants to continue to differentiate itself from its competitors. But it's also super important to make things desirable, to keep encouraging people uh, to use public transportation, which we really know is, is kind of essential to minimize uh, con congestion and pollution within cities. And I guess to that end, maybe I'd like to highlight two of the services that were part of the project. Um, one is the, um, the video assistance and translation tools, you know, with the remote helpers that Yo mentioned previously. I think it's a really, a really interesting way to welcome foreigners. But I think it's also a good balance between, let's say, the human interactions, uh, the architectural features, but also the digital tools that are needed to provide uh, an attractive service experience. And maybe the, the second um, uh, service proposal that we, I'd like to highlight is the rooftop near the metro entrance that uh, you also showed previously. 
So this could, of course, be like a, a meeting point, a rest stop. So if you're a Parisian, if you're a foreigner, if you're a foreigner, it's also maybe a great place to have like a chance encounter with a, a Parisian, a local. And this, um, this proposal, I think, is a way to, to make sure that people feel connected to the city, feel connected to locals which is super important today um, because we've noticed that tourism you know, is not just about seeing the Eiffel Tower. It's also about feeling connected in a more authentic way to the city. And I, felt, I think this is also a very uh, representative um, idea of what RATP uh, would like to become in the future, which is not just a, a transportation provider, but also uh, a service provider that creates an amazing city experience. Of course. Thank you very much, Matthew. I do agree with you. Actually, a metro line is not an isolated uh, system. We have our um, role to play in order to facilitate the interaction between our metro line, uh, transport line, transport system and the environment. So it's a, it's a very important point. Thank you very much. And I move to you, Yasinari. Thank you again. And if you can share your feedback with us. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Sherry. And to RATP, thanks for giving me an opportunity to participate in these uh, studies. I have joined and observed many projects uh, to uh, reconstruct and create new station and the train service of JR East as a one of staff and a manager and a director in 33 years. Japan National Railway uh, failed to uh, provide good service and bankrupted it because service fell below standard. I didn't want to use it. From my long experiences in Japan, I think this study and the report include uh, every necessary and feasible services. If you ask me to emphasize one thing, I strongly recommend, I love the service. The station staff will be like a concierge guiding the area and the transport in Paris. And I also love the service that is friendly to travelers. I think it will make Paris much more attractive. All the other ideas are great. Uh, there may be too much to do, uh, and they may be selfish, I think, but they are not independent. They will be fused and harmonized by digital technology and human hospitality and good design. It creates synergetic effect, just like playing an orchestra. I think the success of Line 14 will make Parisians smile and increase enthusiasm funds. And this success will give an impact on French and global rail services. Fusion and harmony are the key to success. I believe it. And EHTP can achieve to it, I think. Yes, thank you very much. I do agree with you. And actually treating uh, our clients, our passengers as real guests on our line, it's in the philosophy of uh, RETP. It is our ambition. We are working on it. And as you said, it's, uh, it's, uh, we should uh, take care of this, of this in a holistic approach. We cannot just choose one or two services. It's a, it's a, t it's a total system that we should build in order to to uh, satisfy the different needs and expectations of our clients. Thank you very much. So saying that, I move forward to my second question, so this time on the methodology that we have applied and we have used. Thanks to you during this project, service design that was great and so I would like to know um, and have your opinion on this service design in a user cons uh, in the user centric approach that we have tried to apply and uh, if you can t tell us if you use it in your company that would be wonderful so Damien I start with you please so definitely, we have a lot in common uh, between Accor and, uh, and RATP, and uh, this process is uh, really something we use. We use the same similar process. Huh? We're working a lot with designers when uh, we would like to 
work on a new brand or when we would like to work on an existing brand but really uh, uh, redefine the brand uh, uh, equity, identity and the design direction of, uh, of those brands. And if I just give an example with Novotel, where we had uh, uh, designers coming from uh, South America, Middle East, uh, Russia and, uh, and uh, Europe and Asia to all together really think about the, this uh, new dynamic that we need to, to bring to, uh, to, 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 to the brand. So um, it, it is uh, in fact a, a very interesting methodology and even if uh, when we start the process uh, together with RATP, I was, uh, I must say, a bit afraid because we were, uh, uh, we went very, very far and I was like, wow, what are we gonna get uh, going so far? exploring everything, but it's, it's very interesting. It was really about resetting completely everything that we had in mind about what is RATP or was RATP and things a little bit a step forward in order to bring something new and really, I, I don't like to say really innovate. It's not the idea of innovate yeah. for innovation. It's really how we can bring something that will uh, um, uh, uh, bring a lot to the people who's going to use it. And the other things uh, I would like to, to add, it's another common uh, uh, point that we have together, is that Metro, thanks to what you've done, really become the best place to discover uh, uh, Paris. Because Paris, of course, there is the monument, etc. But you can already see that on internet. When you feel Paris, you need to be connected with people. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's really what you bring uh, with, uh, with, uh, with this project. And that's what we are trying to do also in the hotel in order to bring Parisians in the hotel and not only for travelers, in order that the people who travel also have that connection together. And I think the next step will be how we can connect the metro with the hotel mm. and, 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 and play that new role on the evolution of the city uh, globally. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. Looking forward to have a chance to working again with you on this topic and try to find the interactions and complementary between your uh, environment, the hotels, in the hospitality industry and uh, our transport sector. And actually, I do agree with you. People come also to Paris in order to discover this Parisian style and it's very important uh, to to be able to provide uh, uh, this uh, on your uh, on our metro line in your hotels, of course. Thank you very much, Thank Damien. You. So I move to Federic. The same questions uh, tell us if uh, uh, Group ADP we use this methodology or not. Yes, yes, of course. Our passengers are naturally uh, at the center of our concerns, and uh, we are constantly uh, listening to them. Uh, through the, all, all available uh, tools uh, like uh, commu com survey or uh, community uh, observation observatory. We regularly use uh, design thinking methods uh, to anticipate uh, their changing needs of, their, of our packs, uh, passengers sorry, and their line partners. Uh, as an example, uh, we use this uh, type of approach to, to think about uh, the future design of Terminal 4. Uh, we brought together groups of experts and groups of customers with a different profile. And this, uh, this customer uh, were chosen among uh, the members of our customer community. Uh, for the past three years, uh, this community has included 1,000 customers. We exchanged with them uh, uh, by email several times a, a month. And these exchanges are very, very rich and sometimes give the member of the Group ADP Executive Committee the opportunity to uh, hear the customer's voice uh, with full transparency uh, over lunch. Over lunch. Uh, we already have a meeting with them, uh, with our client, uh, our customer next month to understand the impact of the pandemic of, uh, on their mobility mm -hmm. in the short, mm -hmm. medium and long term. And this concerns mobility in the wider sense of the world, taking the plane, of course, but also uh, getting to the airport 
and uh, tomorrow I have no doubt they will be pleased with uh, Metro Line 14 to, uh, to Orly. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me to reflect uh, with you in this very beautiful project and to get inspired by your uh, diverse experience. Thank you to you for all the inputs uh, on this project and thank you for having shared with us the insight from this amazing ongoing project uh, in your company. So before moving uh, to Matthew, I would like just to thank you again, Damien, uh, for having participated uh, uh, in this webinar. Thank you for all you have um, brought uh, to this uh, project because uh, um, in order to respect uh, the, in, uh, the sanitary measures and in order to respect uh, social distances, Damien uh, will leave us and uh, we, will ask, uh, to uh, we will ask you to join us on this stage for the final conclusion of this webinar. And now I will move uh, to Matthew. Matthew, you, uh, you, you was actually our uh, lead expert on this method you and your team that was very great uh, uh, to work with you we have learned about so tell us a little bit about this experience with RATP during this project sure yeah thanks I mean first I guess I want to say that this was really an amazing project and we really loved uh, working with all of you um, one of the, I guess one of the um, some of the key challenges for this project um, I couldn't necessarily go into all the details because you know it was like a multi-layered project but maybe one of the the key challenges was first finding the right directions for such a large complex topic and such a let's say a extended exploration project and i guess some of the ways um that we found interesting to to do this were first um gathering the committee of experts so which included damien frederic and yasunari who, who are all here and this really made sure that you know we were able to have like a 360 uh, view and could not forget any of the stakes or any of the you know uh, parameters that needed to be taken into account for for such a topic. So that was really I think a really interesting aspect. And maybe the other one, which is kind of an extension of this first, is you know we we worked by projecting um, into what the line 14 could be in 2050 before we came back to 2024. And I think this helped us also enhance you know, certain of the stakes or certain of the constraints or parameters that would need to be taken into account, some that we might have not forgotten or not seen as clearly had we not done this. Um, and maybe one of the also the key ingredients um, that helped us to find the right directions, and I think this is something, something that's often overlooked in projects because we talk about methodology, but I guess a project is also you know, kind of a human adventure, yeah, I think it's the trust and time and guidance that, that Yo and, and his team and you, Shadi, and, and everyone kind of gave us. And this allowed the initial thinking to emerge because, you know, kind of as Daniel said, uh, you know, some others might have gotten for, uh, kind of worried in the initial stages of the project because we need to explore all over the place. Maybe they would have even shut the project down. <laughs> but here we were able to avoid, you know, diving into hasty, undigested um, decisions. Yeah. So that's maybe the first point. And, and the second one, I guess, is more essential to what service design is itself, which is, you know, making sure that the ideas and proposals, but also the deliverables are, of course, relevant, but also desirable. I think this idea is very key to what service design can do. And often, you know, when we work on a forward-looking um, study project, um, the idea is to give recommendations, you know, about what the new future features for the company could be, how they might be built. Um, and often these things are you know, very much recommendations, and they mostly focus on very functional proposals. And often the deliverables are very much, you know, text-based documents, sometimes fairly abstract proposals. And here, of course, we provide a recommendations, but the idea, and this is, you know, completely intrinsic to service design, is also to actually design proposals that embody the concrete ways in which, you know, future passengers could experience line 14. Uh, of course, to make sure that the experience is practical, but also to make sure that you know the right personality, the right emotional connection between RATP and the travelers is conveyed. So I think it's so important to you know incorporate that human touch, that desirable touch, both to get the buy-in um, for the project so it moves into its next stages, which would, could be um, you know further studies for implementation, but also to ensure that the end users will adopt the services when the time comes. 
Yeah, thank you. You are right. That was a human-centric approach, but also a human adventure. And this uh, forecasting, backcasting exercise um, uh, was a real added value of this uh, project. Thank you, Matthew. And yes, you know, you, uh, could you uh, share with us your opinion on the methodology, please? Okay. Uh, of course, uh, we already respect the customer first. Uh, in the first place, uh, the service should be uh, customer-centric. Um, we have already experienced the smile of customer motivates staff and gives a sense of accomplishment in their work. As a result, the number of passengers will increase, and income will increase also, and the service will be improved by using this profit. We need to make this positive spiral. And JR East changed uh, what was said to be the worst service into good service that is welcomed by many customers now. The basic element was safety, the security, convenience, and comfort. With the station renaissance project of JR East and the following variety of new services, our station has uh, transformed uh, from a mere transit point for passengers to a gathering space for customers mm -hmm. in the 30 years. As a further improvement, uh, we progress to make our station a hub to connect people, things, and experiences. This improvement is driven by customer feedback, I believe and result reaches directly in the form of uh, passenger numbers, the revenue, and the customer voice. Mm -hmm. Whether or not this evaluation can be fed back to the next step will be the key to success. I believe RATP has the power to uh, implement and achieve them. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you to you and thank you for this excellent example from outside France, from Japan. Uh, thank you. So all of you, thank you again for having accepted our invitation. Yo is on the stage with us. So Yo, please, if you can make the final conclusion of this, this panel discussion, please. Yes, Shadi, with a great pleasure. <clears throat> I will never thank enough the user studio agency and the experts internal to our ATP and external who have helped us to deliver something which is not a promise, which is uh, like a commitment because if we have chosen to present that to the public, it's not to put it in the ice fridge or on shelves, mm -hmm. of, course. of course, but it will be a tough way because for us it's, it's not an achievement, not an end, but it's beginning of a long lasting process. And um, I think that this study has shown that design can make innovation more reliable. I've already said that uh, a few minutes before, but um, it makes the results um, visible and you can touch it with your eyes. You know what you want to get. It's not te te technological oriented. Of course, technology is key. But if you know what you want to obtain, it's much better. But in this case, this mixture between technology and human, physical and digital, it was really a um, very, very interesting moment. We have jumped from one point to another, from minutes to minutes in the, our meetings. So. Uh, Due to the contribution, the, the level of expectations of our experts and uh, of uh, also uh, the other clients in the, in the company, I think we have um, begun to, to renew a, a way to, to do such complex mm -hmm. innovation programs to okay. begin them. So I hope that with this study, we'll able to deliver in 2024, a real French touch service, which will gather the excellence of uh, many things which 
are already existing, which, but we, we are not, which are not exploited, mixed with an inter in international uh, approach, which is normal for a, a world metropolis like Paris. Great. So let's meet in 2024. Yes, of course. Thank you very much, Yo. Uh, so uh, we are arriving at the end of our webinar. I have a very long thank you list, but unfortunately we don't have time, so I wouldn't mention the names. I would like to first, I would like to thank you first of all to our project team from inside RETP that was wonderful to work with you. I would like also to thank you all our partners, a great experience with you. And of course, our uh, financial um, partner, uh, the, the European Commission, and a special thanks to you, dear audience. Thank you for having stayed with us uh, till the end of uh, the webinar. I won't say goodbye to you. I would like to tell you, uh, say you, see you soon on Metroline 14 uh, to discover our uh, new services. So see you soon. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you.